Welcome to the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources Is My House in the Floodplain informative video. This video was created to help Minnesota homeowners or those looking to buy a home in Minnesota determine if their house is in a floodplain and what that might mean in terms of risk and cost. To start, we'll be looking at why floodplain maps are important. Next, we'll discuss what types of maps exist and which ones are available in your area. Then we will lay out how to acquire a copy of a floodplain map in the area of your house or what to do if one is not available. For this video, be aware that those involved in floodplain mapping, management, and insurance use different terms that for our purposes mean the same thing. Lenders and insurance agents talk about the Special Flood Hazard Area, or SFHA. Many call it the 100-year floodplain, but it is also called the 1% annual chance floodplain. This is because you have a 1% chance of having a flood that size or bigger in any given year. Now, let's look at why flood maps are important. First and foremost, a flood map will show areas at higher risk from flooding. These maps specifically show the Special Flood Hazard Area, or SFHA. Again, that's the 1% annual chance flood. However, we commonly see floods that affect land beyond what is shown as high risk on the maps. It's good to note, these maps show historical risk, but current trends show our climate is becoming warmer and wetter. We are also seeing more intense storms. For example, in Minnesota, since 2000, widespread rains of more than six inches are four times more frequent than in the previous three decades. These maps are also important for buyers and sellers of real estate. If there will be a federally backed mortgage or loan, flood insurance is mandatory for structures located in or touching the special flood hazard area. Lenders usually automate the process of checking these maps, so a homeowner might want to confirm that their house is indeed in or touching the special flood hazard area. The method you use to find your map will differ depending on which county your house is in. We'll start at the Google homepage and select the search bar. We'll enter mndnr.gov and hit search. Next, we'll select the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources homepage from the search results. From here, we will select the search bar at the top right and enter Find Flood Maps and select Search. From the results list, we will select the Find Flood Maps page. This page shows the map data available for each county in Minnesota, as well as some other floodplain map-related info and updates that you may be interested in checking out at another time. For now, we're looking at the map on the right side of the page. This map shows the status of each county in Minnesota. Let's enlarge the map by selecting it. First check if your county is blue, green, or gray. Note that this map has other information that we aren't discussing today. Blue counties have the new digital flood insurance rate maps, known as DFIRMs. The green counties have older paper maps, and the gray counties don't have digital or paper maps yet. For all three options, digital maps, paper maps, and no map, we will now go to FEMA's Map Service Center website at msc.fema.gov. We'll start with a digital map example and then show you a paper map example. Last, we'll show you how to download documentation for unmapped areas. Now, let's go to the FEMA Map Service Center. Starting from the Google homepage, we will select the search bar and type in FEMA Map Service Center and then select Search. From the list, we will select the msc.fema.gov site. Our digital flood map example site is in Ramsey County. We don't want to single out anyone's home, so we'll go to the search bar in the center of the page and enter 1200 Warner Road, St. Paul, for the DNR's regional office, and then select Search. Once we've entered the address, the page will reload and we will see our site in the center of the map. If you don't have a specific address, you can also enter a city name, and it will usually take you to the city hall for that community. And then you can pan to the site of your interest. Now let's look at the main floodplain layers. First, 
we will see blue area labeled as Zone AE. In the legend directly below the map, we see this is called the Special Flood Hazard Area, or 100-Year Floodplain. Second, if FEMA has done a more detailed study of the flood risk, there will usually be a red and blue cross-hatched area within our 100-Year Floodplain. This is called the floodway. These detailed studies are usually in heavily populated areas. On the legend, this is called the regulatory floodway. Both the 100-year floodplain and the floodway are part of the special flood hazard area where flood insurance is mandatory for buildings with federally backed loans. As stated before, if a structure is within or even touching the special flood hazard area, the lender must require flood insurance. Lastly, in the areas with detailed studies, there will usually be a tan-colored layer. In the legend directly below the map, the tan-colored area is known as the 0.2% annual chance flood hazard layer. This is a medium risk area, which is usually showing the 500-year floodplain. In this tan area, there's a higher risk, so flood insurance is encouraged, but not mandatory. There's other info in the legend that we won't cover here. Let's zoom out for a better view of our site. To do this, we will select the minus symbol from the top left corner of our map. We can see this area has the floodway, the 100-year floodplain, and the 0.2% annual chance flood hazard area. Now, by selecting the plus symbol in the top left corner of the map, we can zoom in and check the location of the building compared to our floodplain layers. We can see that no part of the building touches the blue layer, and therefore it is outside the special flood hazard area. This means flood insurance would not be mandatory for our building if we had a federally backed loan. Even if our building was in the 500-year floodplain, flood insurance would not be mandatory. But note that a lender can require flood insurance as a condition of their loan, and some will require flood insurance if the 500-year floodplain touches the parcel. You can check with lenders on their requirements for flood insurance. Now we want to print our map. To do so, we select our building on the map to move the red pin. Due to the large size of FEMA flood insurance rate maps, or firms, we have the option to print a letter-sized firmet, or mini-firm, which shows a smaller portion of the map at the original scale. To make a firmet, we will select the icon for a dynamic map just above our map. The page will then say your requested flood map is being generated. After a short wait, our official floodplain map, or FERMET, will pop up as a PDF and is ready to be printed or saved. Depending on how busy the FEMA site is, it could take a minute or more. We can select the download icon, which is third from the left in the top right of the PDF window, to download. Selecting Save File and OK will accomplish this. To print our map, we select the print icon, which is second from the left in the top right to open a print dialog box and select our printer from the drop down list and then select OK. If you've been told flood insurance is mandatory for your building and your map shows your building is outside the special flood hazard area, show your printed map to your lender. Since this is an official FEMA map, lenders will usually accept the map to document that flood insurance is not mandatory. However, about 30% of flood insurance claims in Minnesota are in those lower risk areas and closer to 50% of actual flood damage is in those lower risk areas. So if your building is close to the special flood hazard area, or you know you're in a lower area, we would recommend that you purchase the discounted flood insurance that is available for buildings outside of the SFHA. Our next example is a county that only has paper maps available. We will start at the Google search homepage and select the search bar and enter FEMA Map Service Center and select Search. From the search results, we will select the msc.fema.gov result. Our example site will be an old building in Sibley County. So once the site loads, we will select the search bar and enter our address in Lesur, Minnesota and select Search. Now, since we're in an area without digitized flood maps, our map shows an aerial photo covered with light green dots. The legend in the bottom left verifies what we already know. The dots mean no digital data available. We'll move the pin to our building by selecting where our building is located. 
When the old flood maps were printed, they were broken into panels. Above the map, the text tells us that the area we are interested in is shown on panel number 270-620-0190C and what year the map was issued. As we zoom out, by selecting the minus sign in the top left corner of the map, we can see each panel bounded by a blue box. It is good practice to note where our building is within the panel. We've chosen to use the highway directly south of our building as our indicator. Next, we want to view the panel containing our building, so we select the View Print Firm icon above the map. This will open a new window with our map panel. This is an older scanned map and unfortunately is not shown over an aerial photo. The red pin is also missing. We will select the Zoom Out icon to show the entire panel. To determine if our building is in the floodplain, we'll open the previous window and compare our panel to the aerial photo with our pin. Once we've located our building on the panel window, we select the icon to make a ferment. Three boxes and some instructions will pop up on the left side of the screen. Follow the step-by-step -step instructions on the left side of the window, starting at the top. In this case, we want our map to be the default letter size. So under number one, select page size, we select letter eight and a half by 11. Under number two, select and move areas, our options are to move the print area, the scale and north arrow, and the title block. We only need to move the print area, so with the print area selected, the large box is red. This is like a cookie cutter that we can move to choose the area we want printed in our map. We will move the print area box down so our building location is near the center of the box. We also may want to double check the locations of the boxes for the legend and north arrow. We can do this by selecting these options, located directly under the print area option, and moving the respective boxes. But in most cases, these boxes won't need to be moved at all. The next option, number three, create format, will create our map. We can select either PDF or TIFF image file format by selecting the icon next to each option. In our case, we want a PDF. So we will select PDF, which is second from the bottom of the left pane. Now when the new page loads, we see a portion of the flood map panel that is zoomed into the location we selected with our red cookie cutter box. This is at the same scale as the original map and includes a north arrow, scale, and panel legend. We can now save our format by selecting the icon in the top left corner. Like the digital formats, the paper format shows the special flood hazard areas. The legend on the right side shows the SFHA, or 100-year floodplain, as a dark gray shaded area. The floodway area is dark gray with black crosshatching, and the 500-year floodplain is lighter gray. Since this format doesn't have an aerial background, the only way to make an in or out determination is to use a scale and measure from any landmarks, like our highway shown on our map. In this case, we found our building and see that it is not in the floodplain. You may have noticed that these older paper maps are tougher to work with than our newer digital maps. They don't have an aerial photo background, and the area may have changed due to developments since the map was made. The Minnesota DNR and FEMA are currently working toward getting digital maps in paper map counties. For sites in Minnesota, there's another website that shows floodplain maps on an aerial photo background for most paper map counties. We'll cover that site after our unmapped area segment. We mentioned earlier that some counties and cities don't have FEMA maps. There are a number of reasons they don't have FEMA maps, including funding limitations. For counties that don't have FEMA maps, the main reason is that most of the development in those counties is on lakes. Homes on those lakes are regulated by local ordinances that follow Minnesota's shoreland management regulations, and which include requirements similar to those for floodplain management. For our example, let's choose a site in Hubbard County, which is currently an unmapped county. To do this, we will start at the FEMA Map Service Center site, msc.fema.gov, and search for a city. We'll select the search bar and enter Park Rapids, Hubbard County, Minnesota, and select Search. When our map loads, 
we see our community covered in a green crosshatch pattern. Looking at our legend on the bottom left, we see that the area is unmapped. You should also note the text above the map saying, FEMA has not completed a study to determine flood hazard for the selected location. Therefore, a flood map has not been published at this time. If documentation is needed to show that your house isn't in the mapped floodplain, this page can be printed. You can use this to show your lender or your insurance agent that flood insurance is not mandatory due to the absence of a floodplain map. You may navigate to your internet browser's print page options or use the print screen command for Windows to print this document. In most cases, printing this page to include the map, address, and FEMA statement is adequate for documentation. Sometimes the lenders want additional documentation that your house is in a low flood risk area. So another way to document that your community doesn't have a map is to visit FEMA's community status book for your state. We will do this for Minnesota by selecting the search box on our Google search homepage and entering FEMA Community Status Book MN and from the list of results selecting the FEMA.gov slash CIS slash MN site. The Community Status Book for Minnesota will load as a PDF and list every participating community in alphabetical order, their community ID or CID, county, and the current effective map date. There are other columns listed, but for our purposes, these are the important ones. Once you scroll down to the City of Park Rapids entry, look in the Effective Map Date column. If it's blank, or if it says NSFHA, which stands for No Special Flood Hazard Area, it means there's no map. This confirms flood insurance is, again, not mandatory. This page could be printed off as well for documentation, though you may also want to print off the last page which has the legend defining NSFHA and other terms. Many lenders may not be familiar with these terms. This can be done by noting the page your community is on, opening the print dialog box, and selecting your community's page, selecting print, and repeating these steps, but for the last page. Those of you in Minnesota, there is another website that shows the 100-year floodplain layer, similar to the FEMA Map Service Center but with the elevation contours and other info all on top of aerial photos. We will start at our Google search homepage and select the search bar and enter Mintopo, M-N-T-O-P-O, and select search. We will select the state.mn.us result from the results list to open the site. When we first open the site, we will see an interactive map of the state of Minnesota with several icons across the top. We will select the search bar at the top left of the screen and enter in our address or city name, just as we did on the FEMA site. Once our location is loaded, we can drag and move the map around. To view the floodplain, we will select the map layers icon, the icon third from the right at top right of screen, and a panel will appear below the icon. We will select the FEMA flood data box at the bottom of the panel to turn on FEMA flood data. We can also use this panel to turn off contours by checking or unchecking the boxes to the right of each of the contour options. Once our flood data have loaded, we will see the pink is our SFHA layer. Using the bar underneath will make the SFHA layer more or less transparent so you can see the background image better. To minimize the panel, we will select the same map layer's icon at the top right, and it will disappear. Next, we can select the base maps icon, second from the right, at the top of the screen to switch backgrounds to aerial imagery or terrain. This will help you to view your building relative to the floodplain layer. You can do other things at this site, but we just wanted to give you a sample, and you can explore it more on your own. That concludes the is my house in the floodplain video. If you have any questions about floodplain regulations, please contact your city or county. Thank you from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources Floodplain Management Team.